welcome back to learn skn and today we are going to wrap up production we had left some topics on the table and so we're going to clean them up today and that would be objectives eight nine and ten we would have covered all the rest objectives in previous videos but we did not cover these three that i spoke of earlier so today we're going to just wrap up those objectives but before we do so you know what to do like the video subscribe to the channel and share the content so that the channel can grow even further so yes today we're we are going to be looking at objective eight describe the characteristics of cottage industries nine outline the functions of small businesses and ten discuss the advantages and disadvantages of small businesses so the first thing we're going to look at is what is a cottage industry and so you have some pointers right off the bat from your syllabus cottage industries home base mainly manual in terms of the labor and the way in which things are done small scale use of local raw materials and use of family members as labor so those are some quick characteristics of the cottage industry and as the name suggests these are businesses that tend to be very small and they operate from within the home of the proprietor or, or the owner so they are small normally from the home mainly use manual labor small scale use of local raw materials and use of family members as labor so normally if you're making let's say jams or jellies or some drinks from your home or some you know cassava bread or whatever you would normally use material that you get from the local people local persons a farmer down the road a farmer in the market hardly ever would you see someone who is operating a cottage industry have some big imports you know you wouldn't go and import any raw materials and things like that that's a little above the scale so you normally operate on a smaller level and so you normally would use things from the the um, local community so in our textbook we have it here a cottage industry is one of the smallest forms of business it involves small-scale production of handcrafted items in a home or within a local community the main characteristics of the cottage industry are as follows they are home base production takes place in people's homes or in the local community centers and church halls they use mainly manual labor to complete production tasks. Use of, use of machinery, tools, or other capital equipment is often minimal and small scale. The scale production is small. They often rely on the use of local materials, for example, seeds, fruits, vegetables, clay for pottery, cotton to produce hammocks and baby slings, leopard wool to produce various items such as bowls and spoons, right? Sorry, leopard wood, sorry. They produce a wide variety of mainly handmade products, including jams, cakes, and other food items, spices and sauce, clothing, fabric designs, incorporating batik and tie-dye, craft items, and musical instruments. So those are just some of the same thing I just outlined. So you see what kind of things you should expect to be produced from within a cottage industry, a cottage-based industry, a cottage-based business, or a business that is run out of the home so those are just some of the characteristics and you, if you have the textbook you can read further to understand the origins of the cottage industry etc keep in mind you can always purchase the textbook the soft copy from the link in the description so just look at those links that you see in the other videos like various packs and you can purchase the textbook along with past papers and PowerPoint presentations and stuff um, from the packs in the description so keep note of that all right so advantages and disadvantages of the cottage industry advantage they create employment in local communities for people with specialized skills especially in traditional craft areas they use locally available materials providing a source of income for your local producers so you see right there so the producers would have a market, a readily available market, for them to sell their products because of the whole cottage industry. Right? And then look at that part one telling us that persons who are creative. I mean, all of us in the Caribbean would have seen this. Right? A lot of persons targeting the tourism sector, they would make their own little handicrafts and sell them as such. Right? So they allow them to, you know, have a little side hustle. Use your, 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 your craftsman skills to make a living and make a side living things like that labor costs tend to be low if family members are employed so you know once you employ a family member you if it's you yourself doing it i mean labor cost is you 
So it's not going to be as high as somebody who might be demanding, you know, an exorbitant salary because their family is a side hustle, is a, is a little side thing. So, you know, it's not going to be as high. Work can be combined with other households or family activities. Capital requirements are usually minimal. The sales of craft items and souvenirs to foreign tourists earns foreign exchange for the country. So those are some advantages of the cottage industry. Some disadvantages of the cottage industry. The quantities produced tend to be small, limiting sales and profitability. I mean, if you are a small man operation, keep in mind that sometimes these cottage industries are still smaller than a sole trader. Right, because a sole trader could be a restaurant, um, a taxi, fleet of cars, things like that. But a, a cottage, cottage industry, by its very name, the fact that it's small enough to be worked out of your home, the scale is relatively tiny. Right, so your output is going to be relatively tiny. Enterprise and marketing skills of the producers tend to be poor. The uncertainty of the tourism market can create periods of low sales. Because, you know, tourism is cyclical. You have a tourism season, a high, low. When it's low, you might not make as much money from that particular endeavor as you would when the season is up and running. Production often takes place in communities located away from the main consumer markets in urban areas. This limits opportunities to, to make sales. For example, in Guyana, many items are produced by the Amerindians located in the interior region. So you see what I'm talking about here? Because you're walking from your home, and so you can't just up and take you home to the hot spot. Right, you know, I mean, rent in these areas, in the tourism areas would be sky high. You can't afford that. And so because you have to make your stuff at home, you have to then transport them wherever your home is to find your market. You have to actually go and look for your target market, your target audience. That can be difficult. That can be um, resource heavy. And so you might not be able to tap in fully into your 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 target market because, you know, imagine you have a star located somewhere. Somebody would just walk in and buy but if you have to come and, you know, bring up temporary a temporary setup, then you might lose some sales, some impulse buying and things like that. Government may be required to grow the industry and improve quality. Sorry, government support may be required to grow the industry and improve quality. Right, so that's just the cottage industry in a nutshell, right? So you understand the characteristics, the advantages and disadvantages of the cottage industry so like i said before if you you can purchase the powerpoints and the, the text from the description right and so you see somebody here doing a little cassava production right there in the little maybe in the backyard or something where in the home they're grating the cassava they can make the cassava bread cassava flour whatever they want to do and sell it go and sell it in town or wherever so we have some benefits to the economy now, these benefits would be in alignment with what we're look at, looking at later. When you're looking at the advantages or benefits of a small business, right? So it would be similar. Provide employment, combined easily with household gardening, um, um, child care. So we're saying here is that these kind of jobs, you can have them as a side hustle. So you have enough time to actually do your household duties, do your little gardening, look after your little child, right? while still doing a little side hustle provides market for local products need only a small amount of capital earns foreign exchange if products are exported so that's the cottage industry in a nutshell so that's all you really required to know based on your syllabus so that would be objective eight done and dusted the cottage industry characteristics and some advantages then moving on to number nine outline the functions of small businesses that's what we just explained just a while ago when we had it right here right functions provide employment that's some of them are outlined just some provide employment foreign exchange but there are others that we're going to look at just now from our textbook as it relates to small businesses even from the the powerpoint we have some information here dedicated to small businesses right so we're gonna look at that right now small and growing businesses small businesses most small businesses begin as sm most businesses begin as small firms right so most of them you hear about amazon being started you know uh, um, google being started in a garage 
Apple being started in a garage, Amazon was a little garage flex also, a small little thing. All of them started small, right? They start small. And then they eventually evolve and grow and expand until they reach the behemoth level they are. I mean, Facebook started in a dorm room. And it says Facebook is now global. Apple is now global. Apple is the, the, the richest company right now. A couple of, the market cap is like a couple trillion dollars. Right? Imagine a past billion into trillion. And they started small. Microsoft started small. Microsoft is a global leader now. So some fail, some succeed, but remain small. Some grow and prosper. Small businesses help the economy by creating employment, encouraging economic growth, and providing competition for established firms. Right? So those are some of the ways the small business help the economy. Creating employment, encouraging economic growth, providing competition for established firms. This one is a, is a key one right here. Right? Because you would realize that a lot of large businesses, they're not as flexible or as creative as they once were. As a person who's seeking that personal touch with their companies, their businesses, they tend to go to the smaller um, entities, the smaller firms. But eventually, these small firms tend to get bought up by the larger ones. Look at Facebook. Facebook bought WhatsApp. Facebook bought Instagram. And um, Facebook bought Oculus. A bunch of other firms they bought. Because there were small firms competing with the bigger one. I mean, IG was giving Facebook real licks. Right, WhatsApp was giving Facebook a lot of competition around the world. Maybe not in America per se, but WhatsApp was really predominant, was really popular in India, in the Caribbean, in other countries where the iPhone isn't really the main market leader. Right, so small businesses provide competition for larger firms. They tend to buy them out eventually, but the competition is still there. So just for those, just for FYI, differences between cottage industry and small businesses. A small business usually has its own premises separate from the owner's home right unlike a cottage industry they tend to have a paid employees while cottage industries usually employ family members who share income and will not normally receive a regular wage small businesses may also have very formalized production methods and employ more machinery and other capital equipment so just a little um bar again you can buy the textbook you can buy the powerpoint from the description if you click on the the, the pov pack or whichever one you choose to to look at all right so what we're looking at now, some of the advantages of small businesses versus, you know, well, some advantages. As we're going to look at it just now. Now, we would have covered, we look at just now in, in these slides, would have been the, how it helps the economy. We're going to expand on that later on, right? But we're looking at some strengths and weaknesses of the small business now. So let's go. Strengths. Quick imaginative decisions right quick imagine imaginative decisions what does this mean as a small business you tend to be more flexible and so you can actually roll with the punches roll with the tide something happen you can make a change one time it's just like a big cruise ship versus a small little um dinghy a little a little fishing boat fishing boat one like look at titanic titanic said the, the iceberg from a mile away couldn't steer away enough because it's large lumbering and so it's slow. A small boat would have been able to quickly move, right, to dodge that iceberg. So small businesses tend to be quick and imaginative in terms of they are, that is where innovation lies. A lot of innovation comes from small businesses. That's why I gave you the example of how uh, Google bought out YouTube. YouTube was, a, was, was an up and coming uh, business. And they bought them out because that's, they, they couldn't even think about that themselves, right? Facebook again bought out what I mentioned before, WhatsApp, IG to try to compete. Microsoft bought out what LinkedIn to get that social media presence and things like that. So small businesses are easy to easy to change with the times, right? Look at Zoom when when um, COVID hit. Zoom as a smaller company was able to you know upscale to enterprise level, put in um, this and that patch to try to get the software to work properly, things like that because they are small focused company. A larger company now, look at, look at Microsoft and Teams. It took a while for Teams to even come up to the level of Zoom, right? Teams was just a little bit more, a little bit more harder to operate. Large company, decisions have to come from way above, come down. Small companies, small businesses, quick. The boss right there, they know what to do one time. Moves fast, as I said before. So they see something, a trend, they jump on it one time. Small business, they can move fast, do things quicker, easy, they're flexible. 
can change directions when needed. So all this is basically saying almost the same thing, right? Change directions when needed. If the market forces goes in one direction, the small business can just flip. The larger one might take a while because I would have invested so much money in machinery, in the marketing, machine, in marketing, in other more expensive endeavors to get the world out there for their particular business. So how, imagine you are your large business and you're investing in all this infrastructure. What are you going to do? Just destroy them one time? No. Now we have to do now is wait till time pass and try to build your own, build out your own or, like I said before, buy out the small businesses which you normally tend to do but as a large company you're not as flexible you don't move as fast you can't change directions as much as you would like right look at when snap came up snap could do whatever they want they have the glasses the filters the whole works you realize that all of a sudden facebook tried to emulate and steal ideas from these small companies facebook do they do the um the stories the snaps the status all these things right they steal ideas close Close communication between managers and staff. That goes without saying. As a small business, the interpersonal relations are better than a large business. You can communicate better. As businesses grow, communication becomes more difficult, and that can be a disadvantage of growth. Your communication becomes more difficult. But in a small business, everybody, almost everybody, I know your friend, your cousin, your daughter, everybody. We're close like that. We're a small, close knit group because we are a small business. Personal service to customers. As a small business, you can very well know all of your customers. You can go in and talk to them like they are your old friends because you have the personal connection, a like personal touch. Some large businesses, they put you on a call, they put you um, to a call center in India or somewhere else. You can't even get to the boss, you can't even get to the supervisor. You don't even know who you're talking to because is that uh, systematic, right? You feel like you're talking to menus for days. You call, say, press one. Press five. You want this department? Press two. You press two. You want this that that? Press five. So it's just like the personal touch has been lost with some of these larger businesses. So that's why small businesses have that advantage over them. Weaknesses: difficult to raise capital. We know that from when we're looking at um sole trader partnership. Because it's your loan. It's small. It's a small small enterprise. And so it's hard to raise capital because of your size. Banks would easily trust a big company who has a track record than a small company who might not have as much reach financially as a larger company. Right? Because large companies can just sell shares, make some money. Right? They can just divest this, divest that, make some money. Sell off components of the of their of the of their business to make money. Small businesses, we don't have that luxury. Right? Major investments are out of reach. Again, it's a money thing financial thing you just can't afford to invest in certain things on a certain level exporting is difficult depends on one or two ent entrepreneurs some important skills may be missing so you realize that some of these weaknesses are akin to weaknesses you, you would have found in the sole trader right depends on one or two entrepreneurs so the mine the, 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 the mind power is not there that as opposed to a, a company let's say only two of us running the small business I am good in accounts, you're good in marketing. What about somebody for HR, or R&D, or PR, you know, things like that. So, those are some weaknesses of the small businesses. Difficult in exporting, remember, in order to export, you need to have surplus or a certain level, right? Or, your, it's a niche market and you can meet that market. But other than that, you need to have scale. And so, it's difficult to export small amount of things, especially if you're competing with other businesses of a larger size. Right, and so those are some weaknesses and strengths of a small business. Right, weaknesses and strengths of a small business. And so in the textbook again, you will find some more advantage and disadvantage of the small business. Right, so here we go with some advantages from the textbook. Small businesses can usually be, be set up easily. There are normally few legal requirements involved in setting up a sole trader or small private limited company, and many can be run from home or in rented premises with little capital. So they're easily to set up. We have the example right here. You live upstairs, you go in the shop to the bottom. So you're paying rent or whatever you own the, the, the house, you have to pay the rent for the shop. So right there, you set up easy in a little tuck tuck shop. Right? They are able to respond quickly to changes in economic and market conditions. 
Unlike larger businesses, smaller ones usually do not have a significant amount of capital invested in machinery and premises. This means they may be able to change the production process and products more easily as customers demand and other conditions change. Again, I mentioned the, the example with Titanic versus a small ship, right? When market conditions change, small businesses are more equipped to change with it. Larger businesses, they have to invest in new equipment, get rid of the old ones, change the production styles, things like that. They are innovative and introduce new products and ideas. Small businesses tend to think outside the box and are able to find innovative solutions for problem to problems. This may lead to products which suit the unique needs of customers, including niche markets. The increased competition for larger businesses, we explained that already, right? The increased consumer choice. So again, because you have so many small businesses out there, they give you, the customer, a choice now. I can go here, I can go there, I, have, I can have this available to me, as opposed to when there are only one or two large businesses are not offering things that you want in particular. The owners or managers of small businesses are in closer contact with their customers than owners of larger businesses. This can help small businesses build up customer trust and personalize their products to better meet the, their consumer requirements. Right? Imagine you have a, 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 a small a restaurant or a small shop that sells food and you can go and tell them, make mine without pepper or make mine with this sauce or without that sauce. You can do that because you're small, you can do that. You, pay, you take out a little bit of the batter, you add what the person wants and you know, you work with that. They provide local opportunities for employment and social development. They generate income for their owners, right? Disadvantages now. We looked at some before. Small businesses often lack the skills they need to be successful. Small business owners have to prepare accounts, advertise, recruit, and manage staff, deal directly with customers and suppliers, and carry out many other tasks to run their businesses. However, few owners have the skills necessary to do all the tasks well. They also cannot afford to employ staff with specialist skills because you know if somebody is specialist, they are specialists, that's money. You have to pay them for their expertise. They find it difficult to raise financial capital. Banks and other lenders are reluctant to lend money to small businesses because their risk of failure is high and they have few assets they have to sell to pay off their loans as we explained earlier. They lack the resources necessary to offer a wide range of services or service large number of customers. For example, small businesses may not have the skills or funds needed to operate a website to, make, to take orders online or offer free deliveries. This limits the ability to compete, with cost, compete for customers with much larger businesses. And we can see that. Right? They just don't have the resources to upscale their output to increase the scale of production. They just don't have the resources because they are small, right? And so they can't really reach as many, as many customers as they would like because they simply lack those resources. Finally, small businesses may be unable to compete on cost or price with larger businesses. We know that. You have to compete on your quality and your timing or something else, not on price or cost because you'll always get beat. So you have to find a way to sell a premium right when it is handmade personalized uh you know one of a kind bespoke that kind of way right you can't buy in bulk so you might have to go and be innovative and get a deal with some local suppliers or something small businesses are unable to buy in bulk so they do not receive bulk purchase price discounts from their suppliers the interest charge they must pay on any loans are like are likely to be high to reflect the fact that they are more risky than large businesses they lack the financial capital to employ specialist, and specialist equipment and staff, which could help them to improve the efficiency and reduce the average cost of production and prices. This is why many small businesses avoid competition with larger businesses by offering niche and personalized products larger firms would not find profitable. Right, So you have to find your niche, find what advantage you have, your, your, your core competencies to overcome what the larger firms cannot do. They cannot give that personal touch to their business, right? And so that's exactly the advantage and disadvantage of small businesses. And again, you have them here 
in your syllabus a little flavor and so what you have to do is dig deeper in the textbook to get a better understanding of what we just outlined and again i say we do sell the textbook you can buy it from the not the textbook alone right is the textbook tied with the syllabus tied with some past papers tied with uh powerpoint that kind of stuff in the in the packs in the description so that's it for now right that's it for now and with this we have completed the production side of things right for the syllabus we already completed objectives one through two write down we, we did 11 we did 12 we did 13 and so production is over finished done with right so what you have to do now stay tuned to learn skn for when we do any other video on pob videos on pob or any other past papers all right so thanks for watching thanks for liking subscribe to the channel hit the bell so you can learn skn drops in other videos if anybody have any access to any 2022 past papers feel free to email learn skn at outlook right to so we can go to them as a community all right thanks for watching thanks for listening